Shalom to all our wonderful viewers. God is a good God. We in Guyana are enjoying the mercies, grace, favor, and blessings of God. We are climbing the ladder of success, moving from a nation that was once plagued with courses to a nation that is blessed. As we celebrate our 50th Republic anniversary, there is no turning back. Guyana will grow from strength to strength, knowing God is on our side. Guyana, onward, upward, may we have a go. <clears throat> day by day, in strength and beauty grow, till at length, we each of us may show what Guyana sons and daughters can be. These are the words from one of our national songs the song of Guyana's children. This is your choice to be with us on choices. Visitors, God bless you. God bless Guyana. As we look for leaders um, in any organization, in any group, in any society, there are a number of key things that we should focus on and uh, this was made explicit and manifest in, in, in the book of Acts. <coughs> um, the, a classical example was displayed in the book of Acts as to how we actually should pinpoint persons for leadership. And uh, verse 3 of Acts 6, it says, Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom. Then we can appoint those men over this business and we apostles will continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now if we look at how this, uh, the approach that the church took, uh, this approach was not based upon who you back in. It was not based upon who looked like you, who talked like you, and who sounded like you. But it was clear of blinkers. This approach focused on men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, and the men of wisdom, seven. And so, as we consider choosing people, it is important that these qualities be fulfilled if we are really going to make the kind of progress that we want to make. It, these men there did not go on how they feel. And this was not sentiment. As a matter of fact, the people that were chosen, the seven people, they were all different mm -hmm. from the large lot. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, God, now that we have shocking people, you know, um, the seven men, I think they were uh, Phoenicians or something like that, they, they refer to them as. So they were like proselytes then, they were Jews who were converted to Christianity. Jews converted to Christianity. And so there's a place for everyone in leadership. God is not blinded by our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings. But God has a way of finding people out of the blues, as we would say, for leadership. And we should remember that men of good reputation full of the Holy Ghost and men of wisdom, gentlemen. You know, um, excellent um, reference. This is one of the problems that have faced the early church, early church um, after the day of Pentecost. And it was one concerning resources. And the resource then was food. Um, how the food was being divided up. And so I think it was the um, the Jews, not the um, not the, the Grecian Jews, I think it was, who were complaining that the Jews who were born in um, Jerusalem were um, showing favor. One set of Jews was showing favor to what you might call a kitten kin, their own, as opposed to the others. 
and so there was a problem there and it's it's quite unique how the problem was solved they decided that look okay you select from among yourself the ones who will mitigate and solve this problem and you know like you said quite surprisingly doctor the persons who were chosen were from the other group to solve the problem so the point in all of this is that sometimes we look strictly to our own um, because they look like us, they speak like us, they dress like us. But in God's way of de dealing with issues, God sees beyond and the point is God looks at our heart. <laughs> so the point you're making concerning integrity, the point you're making concerning being filled with the Holy Spirit, people who are um, who will generally have the interest of all was the point that um, the apostle um, that Luke is bringing out there in the book of Acts. Excellent. This is choices. The name of this program is choices. And the discussion today yes. is choices. And we are in a season where we all are encouraged to make significant choices. Choices about our own personal lives, choices about the company, we take the company. And as a nation, choices over who our next um, government will be. Those are all significant decisions that we should not take easily or lightly. And because of that, this program becomes very, very, very critical to all of us as we examine how God, what God requires of us. Thank you, Dr. Hudson. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for making the setting the stage uh, among the things that God looks for is a level of integrity and how uh, and God demands of us to have a relationship with him so that he'll be able to lead and direct our hearts and so when we even if we want to go overboard he still has a control the power of the Holy Spirit to pull us back and every one of us if you examine your life quietly you recommend that those skills are necessary which organization you're working for, you know, we, we can trust you. Which, um, how are you going to make quality decisions? And we, we are so um, sensitive and we are so critical that if you don't have guidance and really leadership from God Himself, then you are not going to be able to, um, you will have difficulty making it. So, we want to encourage you today. Examine your decisions and your choices. Well, every day we live, we're faced with that, having to make choices. The choices we make have consequences that can either be good or bad, and sometimes they are far reaching. I think of um, back in the Garden of Eden, a couple given clear instructions by God Himself not what to do or what not to do. But being led astray, made a decision, made a choice that has affected us way down. And so as we think about leadership, as we think about our nation and where we are going, I, I, I like the, 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 the characteristics that were identified earlier in the leader who would be able to mold and move the people to a place that would bring honor and glory to God. Not taking into consideration that, you know, you are a part of me. And as such, because you, you, you are related to me or you identify with me, I give you an opportunity. But I look for the qualities that will help not just one group of people, but all segments of society to realize their potential. So one, not because we are ethnically connected. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I love the way uh, the scripture that Dr. Hudson read this already, how uh, the scripture describes uh, like the adjectives and the adverbs to those critical uh, building blocks, I would say. Uh, because in every uh, leader, there are some basic building blocks like wisdom, integrity, courage, judgment, and so on. 
but the scripture adds to that full of wisdom good reputation so to, to my mind that that doesn't speak of a novice in order for you to, to be full of wisdom you, you have to engage you have to trust God you have to be a part of and over time uh, that wisdom will grow and will mature mature so it is very very important for us to ask God for the wisdom as we choose uh, because these building blocks other, other aspects of leadership will flow from them so it is important that we lay the foundation well and as we choose let us look at, at these qualities in our leaders because we're talking about the context of a country right, right. this is not just a family an organization you know a company this is a, a country so we have to be very very careful and never mind the, the naysayers and what people are saying the buzz around we have to be strategic we have to be wise in our choices because every choice that we make will will have consequences good or bad and you know what, you know the wisdom there was evident because of the leadership because look look what they did um the feud was between the um Hebraic yeah. and the Hellenistic Jews you know what they did they involved the people in making the decision right. you know exactly. And I mean that that is wisdom. Um, the point is, is not they didn't feel that though they had a, a monopoly on on, on solution. They involved you choose among yourself. But the, I but mean, that's great. But the people in their decision, they, it is clear they didn't allow biases to oh. to do their decision. Yes. They didn't allow. Um, similarities and ethnic conditions to rule their decision. They decided to make a, an objective decision. That's and a they key looked point. at those who were capable of doing, yeah. of doing the job. That's a key point. And that's a quality time. decision in terms of making choices. You know, so as, they, 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 as you they made <laughs> <laughs> I remember <laughs> they, 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 um, you know, people talk about sustainable development goals, you know. Um, uh, I think it's goal four, which talks about about the, what, what we see practice there is 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 we, we, we saw quality because if you're going to function like that, there is quality. The other thing that we see coming out in that kind of approach is, is equity, meaning that um, it, it's it, it, power is not is not lopsided, no. but there is some kind of equity in terms yeah. of how it how how power is distributed. Mm -hmm. And we also see the term that Dr. Lee made mention of inclusivity um, is not mutually exclusive um, a situation there with forces. And I like how you brought that into focus is that they were allowed because the larger group could have said, look, you know something, really large group, we were on thing, but they had problems there. And so, even as they practice inclusivity, look where the lot fell. So, um, if we're talking about, you know, I think those values must be taken in equity, I, I quality, am, and inclusivity. I am so happy that they were not trained by any of our politicians. <laughs> because, <laughs> for sure, they didn't attempt to assassinate each other's character. They didn't accuse each other. All they did is to look for objective ways of taking this organization forward. And they didn't fight. I mean, we <laughs> have to, they didn't fight. They launched a complaint. <laughs> they, they didn't fight. But they they, 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 they generated yeah, a yeah. fight. Yeah, but they also <laughs> understood the issue that they had. And the, the, the point is, the issue was important to solve. They had to solve that issue. And so they weren't going to be biased or looking to my own. Because they were looking, the inclusivity, everyone was able to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Because this is the issue, this is what we need to deal with. One of the words, I mean, we, we, we're talking a lot about objectivity and being objective. Uh, very important because over and over again, we would hear our bishop, uh, Dr. Messiah, say, we must never become familiar. Too, too familiar with, with our leader. We must never become, you know, that kind of savvy yes. way because it's, it's very, because sometimes that blurs our objectivity. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, look at the example here. 
you know, sometimes because of an association, the proximity to leadership, you know, this man is of my race, he's of my, my, my likeness, you know, I would choose him, but look at the objectivity. They, they, they laid out the values, the requirements, and the people were able to select based on that. But, but who were the ones that created this, the, the problems? Yeah. There was a genuine need yeah. that had to be met. Yeah. And the people that they thought would have dealt with this thing in its entirety, they were the ones who created the problems. So we had to shift the goalposts now. You know, we had to turn this thing around, so to speak, because... I'm not sure we shift the goalposts. We're not shifting it in the sense that um, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving the responsibility, right? Because they were focused on those that look like them and not the entire group. And so there was a genuine concern that was raised. Yeah, but there was a standard that they had to judge by those, those standards that were set before them. And the choice was yeah, made yeah. based on a certain standard, standard yeah. that was established. Yeah. You know, I, I, it, it reminds me of a portion of scripture um, in the book of Judges, you know, Judges chapter 9. And the children of Israel, during the period of, judge, of judges, they were being ruled by judges at this particular time, not kings, judges, and one of the cities um, was establishing the leader. And uh, it is strange how they went. We looked, we saw what happened in the Book of Acts. We're going back down to the Book of Judges. It's strange how they said, how they selected. Matter of fact, this particular leader, who thought that he should be the leader, what did he do? His name is Abunet. He decided to eliminate all of his competitors. Everyone, 70 of them that were prospects, had the, the ability or could attain the office of the leader, he eliminated them. In fact, he set up folks to get rid of them. It is strange how some will not go the route like was described in the book of Acts, but will go the other route of assassination. And when I say assassination, I don't mean natural killing. When you destroy a man's reputation, a man's name, a man's good name, you're actually assassinating him. It takes a lifetime to build a name, you know, and <laughs> it will take a lifetime to regain it. And so when you do that, so you remove them. And he attained the office. And I love how God sent his servant, his prophet. And he said to them, the prophet used a parable, and that is what I want to focus on. The parable, the parable was that the trees went out to, to select a king. You say you say to yourself, trees to select a king? Yeah. Even, even nature knows what is the correct thing to do. So the trees went out to select a king. And they went to the olive, and they said, olive tree, you are most qualified to lead us, lead us. Olive tree said, but I don't feel the sense of leaving what I'm doing right now to just go and rule over trees. They went from the olive, they went to the, the fig. Then they went to the grapes, and all of them said, I don't think I'm qualified, not qualified, I don't think I want to leave what I am doing to just come and become a leader. Then they went to the bramble. The bramble said, sure, make me the leader. And if you don't make me the leader, I will burn you down. Which means that if I'm not the leader, your life is a trap. If I'm not a leader, you will punish. If I'm not a leader, you are you're not lifting the bar as to what you will do to help me and how you can help me to produce more. But it is strictly out of fear that if I don't get a chance to lead you, you are going to be nothing. Now, that kind of choice, I don't want us to cultivate in our environment, gentlemen. You know, um, as we go through the tiers of leadership there, starting with the college, fame, and grade, each said that they were serving a great good. Their produce was to benefit everybody. 
um, you know, the, uh, the, the olive, the fig, the grape. They were reluctant to leave what they were doing that benefited the greater good to just to rule. But here you have when the opportunity was given to the Bramble, jumped at it. Really wanted to lead. But what are the qualities or what the Bramble has to offer is the issue that we have to look at. What it where's Bramble? <laughs> I mean <laughs> Bramble is a fierce swim of fire. But here is someone who has really nothing to offer the greater good wanted power so greatly, whereas others were quite reluctant. I mean, that, that, that is something that we need to consider in our choice. But they went from the top right down to the bottom, you know, as we were talking. The hierarchical structure of leadership. Um, the very good, the good, um, whatever. Not so good. Not to the worst. <laughs> uh, that is the worst that he, he threw out. If you don't make me the king, so how it's fire. How do we get the olives to be a part of? How do we get the figs and the, and the grapes? Well, the yeah. olive to me has the quality. I mean, even though the olive is reluctant, what the olive, the olive produce, it produces? It produces oil, oil um, which is an important commodity here. It produces something that can benefit the people as a whole. But when you compare the olive with the bramble, the bramble has nothing. All the bramble wants is power. That is what the bramble wants. And if you don't give me power, I'm going to destroy you. So what Jotham was getting at here, that is what um, Abimelech wanted. He just wanted power because look what he did. He eliminated all his brothers. So he wanted simply power. So probably what the prophet is pointing to, what Jotham is pointing here, is the fact that the man you're going to make king, all he wants is power, and maybe he has nothing really to offer you. Uh, but but another thing here, Pastor David, um, is that um, in the process of becoming, he was willing to destroy anyone or anything that stood in his path. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, we, we talk about uh, the, the qualities earlier. Uh, and, when you look at, at, at the, 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 the characteristics of the bramble, look what he said. He said, if you don't make me, I will burn down the cedars of Lebanon. We know how important the cedars are. The cedars are. And he was willing to do that just to attain that position. Oh, boy. You know, you, 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 you mentioned, oh, you yes. asked a question. <laughs> yeah, how, how the olive should be become involved. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the, the, the olive was not a, a, a divine. They, they, they were not interested mm -hmm. in terms of they, in terms of power. Uh, they thought that they were serving yeah. a greater good. Yes. Where yes. they are, yes. uh, I, I think you're trying to lighten that now in the context of you know the yeah. scenario where, where leadership is required. Right. I think we need to encourage. Yes. I think we need to encourage the. the those kinds of people, yes. and we need to motivate them mm -hmm. and uh, to let them know that they have something to offer and eliminate and, power and, and, and not to, to <laughs> shut them down. Yeah, yeah. Um, because sometimes, even when they make that kind of move or they show promise, you know, we live in a strange world, you know, they too could become frustrated, uh, and so they have to be taught and know what they're getting involved in because this arena is not easy. And so I think they need to be encouraged. But I think the question that you're probing is that we need those kinds yes, of people. Yes, yes. And I think in, from the biblical context, the idea is that we need those kinds of people yeah. Yeah. But I ask in the leadership before, system. Yeah. Is politics offer. evil? No, po politics, uh, politics is not evil. I think from <laughs> time memorial, um, God set up uh, leadership systems and structures. I think it is the people who fail. Politics, to my mind, it is a discipline. Like any other discipline, whether you want to say medicine, sociology, or whatever, it's a discipline. The problem always come, uh, comes when we have people now who are going to operate these systems. And so it is the people that we have to address, you know, something. You know, people say, I think there's a song that says, nothing, nothing is wrong with the world when the world goes mad. It's the people that live in it. The world by itself. You understand me? It, it can't harm people, but yeah. it, it is the people who actually 
dispense justice, people who actually uh, treat with issues and so on. They know so politics is not an So we don't need Bravo politicians. No, we can't <laughs> because we don't want people to warn us. <laughs> but we have. I, I think this is the reason that God sets up one and pulls down another. Because God has got a clear insight into what he wants to do when he wants to do it. And he just goes about doing it. So nobody can stop the hand of God when it comes to him directing things in this world that he's creating. And I like what Promotion you said comes from him. Amen. He sets up one and he pulls down the other. And the wisdom that he gives to the persons that he set up is for the benefit of everyone. Reverend like Tony, you said, Reverend that God Tony. has no one has a corner on God. God has the final say in terms of where we go and how it must be done. So nobody can manipulate God. You might be able to manipulate people, but not God. Mm -hmm. The Bramble was the last to be approached. Mm -hmm. We all know the Bramble won't go down everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if the olive fig or the vine had answered the call, the Bramble would not have gotten an opportunity to be even asked the question in the first place. So what we are saying is that a lot of people who you know that God has blessed you, you know that um, you have the potential, you're producing, but sometimes we got to look at the bigger picture can produce for yourself. The part is never greater than the goal. And so leadership must lead. Bramble will not have an opportunity to be asked the question if the olive, if the fig, the divine step up to the plate. You know, so Bishop would normally say, worship begins in the house, but it ends in the public domain. It is beyond just coming to church and lift your hands and say, God, I love you, I will serve you, I worship you. It goes into what we do after we leave the house of God. And God is calling upon every one of us to make a decision, to choose. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, Joshua says this, as we leave this program. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Choose, yes, choose, you choose. Whether the gods of, the, of your ancestors served beyond, beyond the Ephraites or the gods of the Amorites whom, whose land you now live. But for me and my household, we will Serve the Lord. This is God says. I pray that God will help me to make quality decisions for where He wants to give them. God bless you. Shalom. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Wertmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.